Hi there, welcome to my video on elementary differential equation. This is the first video for chapter 7, and the topic for this chapter is uh, systems of two nonlinear differential equations, and in particular, we'll be focusing on autonomous equations. Okay, let's get started. So in this video, we will introduce the concept of autonomous system and we'll introduce um, the definition of the critical points and uh, ways of finding critical points. Okay, so um, now we consider two by two systems. So we have two unknowns. We denote them by um, xt and yt. And then we have the following system. These are functions of t, so the derivative of x is some function capital F, depending on x and y, and the derivative of y is a function we call capital G, depending on x and y. And the important feature of the system is that the right-hand side, these two functions here, they are functions that depend only on x and y, and in particular, these functions do not depend on the time t. Okay. So this means the evolution of the system only depend on the state of the system, what the values of x, y are, and it doesn't matter um, at what time um, it happens. So if it happens today or it happens tomorrow, it evolves in the same way. Okay. And then, of course, there's the um, initial um, condition that's given at initial time t naught is given as x naught and y naught. Okay, so a system in the form as above is called autonomous. And typical examples very well studied in the literature are in population dynamics. Okay, we can also use vector notation to um, write this system in a more compact way as the following, x vector prime equal to a capital phi vector valued function and then the initial vector at t naught is given as x naught vector. And here the x vector would be just a vector consisting of the two unknowns x and y. And this phi here is a vector value function taking capital F and capital G for the first and second um, component respectively. And the, the initial vector is collecting of the initial condition x naught and y naught. Now for such a system of a being autonomous, um, there is a, a point and some value of x, y, which is very important. These are called um, critical points. So the definition of a critical point is a point such that the right-hand side is zero. So this means the capital F takes value zero and the capital G takes value zero. In the vector notation, this means the phi vector is zero for this x vector, which is the critical point. So we see that um, what is special about these critical points is that um, at the critical points, x prime, y prime will be zero. So the system is not moving. So if you are initially at a critical point, then you stay there. It's also called um, an equilibrium for that reason. Okay, so how do we find the critical points and uh, do they exist or, and are they unique? Well, here, since we're talking about nonlinear equations, so the function capital F and capital G are not, not necessarily linear functions. Therefore, the situation is more complicated. So there might be no solutions. And there might be one solutions, and there could be multiple, and also, in principle, infinitely many solutions. Okay, so it very much depends on the um, function f and g. So for each situation, we'll have to analyze individually. Okay, so um, maybe we have learned um, the method of Newton iteration for a single equation which is nonlinear. There is an algorithm 
to find zeros. And then here is a two by two system. So what I want to stress is that finding zero for a system of two nonlinear equations might not be a trivial task. It could get quite complicated. Okay, um, let's take some examples of locating the critical points. Examples that are not complicated, that one can find um, the exact critical points. So the first example is the following. x prime equals to this function on the right hand side. You see it's a function of x and y, but not on t. And y prime is this function here on the right hand side. Okay, so how do we find zeros of, uh, so this function equals zero and this function equals zero simultaneously? How do you find the x and y's that satisfies that? We see that in this example, it's presented in a convenient form and in the sense that the right hand sides are already in factorized form. So for the first equation, this is function f, if you want it to be zero, then you have two possibilities. Either the first factor is zero, which will give you x equal y, or the second factor is zero, which gives us x minus y. Um, um, okay, sorry, the typo. It has to be x plus y, because when this is zero, and you move x and y to the other side, you change the negative sign into positive sign. Okay, now for the second equation, if one wants this to be zero, there are um, two possibilities, either x equals zero, the first factor, or the second factor will be y equals negative two. Okay, so we have this condition, this one or this one, and this one or this one. So we see that we can pick one of this, combine it with one of this, and that will guarantee the right hand side is zero for both equations. And since there are two choices from the first one and two choices from the second one, we see that um, in principle, we can have four combinations. Okay, so next we'll take a closer look to see um, all these four combinations, what they are and uh, what solutions they would lead to. Okay, so let's take the first one, which is uh, taking the, the first condition, x equal y, and the first condition, x equal zero. And if we require both, we see that x will be zero. And then by using this equation, we see that y equals zero. So zero, zero is a critical point. Okay, now for the second critical point, we will take this condition, x equal y, and combine it with y equals negative 2. So we see now we have y equal negative 2, and then because x must equal y, then x is negative 2. Therefore, negative 2, negative 2 is our second critical point. Okay. So the third critical point can be found by using the second condition here and combine with the first condition here. So x plus y is one and x is zero. Then we immediately have x equals zero. And then x plus y is one would lead to y equals one. Now the last um, possibility in the combination is to combine this condition with that condition, which we put here. And then we see that um, y is negative 2, and put that in here, the first equation gives us x is 3. Okay, and that's the critical point number 4. So we see we have four critical points. So in this example, um, each combination gives exactly one critical point. Okay, that's just for this example. It's not a general rule. Okay, so um, let's try to summarize some general strategy that we have concluded from this example. 
So step one would be try to factorize the right hand side, the functions capital F and the capital G, um, as much as you can. And then using the factorized form, find the conditions for each equation. And then there might be multiple conditions for each equation. There we can make all possible combinations. And for each combination, we try to solve and try to find possible solutions. OK, so now using the strategy, we will take another example to find critical points. Here is our system. x prime equals that and y prime equals that. And we see that the right hand sides are now not factorized. OK, um, under that observation, we see that the first step, we will try to um, factorize our right hand side. So let's look at the first equation. And we see that x is a common factor, and we can take it out. And then we'll have y minus 6 as the other factor. So that's easily done. And the second equation, um, this one, um, we see that for the first two terms, um, there is a common factor of x. So we can combine the first two terms in a group and the last two terms in a group. And then for the first two terms, we take out the factor x outside times y minus 2. And then the second group is still y minus 2. Now we see for these two groups, um, we see that y minus 2, again, is a common factor. So we can take that out. And we'll have x plus 1, which is this x here and the constant 1 here, as another factor. OK, so the second um, the equation of the right hand side of the second equation now is factorized into two factors, x plus 1 times y minus 2. OK, now let's um, write out the conditions. So for the first equation, it will be um, x equals 0, that one, or y equals 6 for this factor. And for the second one, we'll have x equal negative 1 from the first factor, or y equals 2 from the second factor. OK, so since there are two conditions from each, two choices here and two choices here, in principle, we can make four combinations. But we see that not all of them make sense. For example, if we take this, combine with this, x cannot equal to 1 and negative 1 simultaneously. So that combination gives no solution. And also, y equals 6 and y equals 2, that combination also gives no solution. Okay, So there are only two um, of the combinations actually gives us a solution, that is, combining this one with that one. So at the point x is 0, y is 2. And the other one is x is negative 1 and y equals 6 here. So these are the two um, combinations that actually lead to solutions. And therefore, we end up with only two critical points, which are listed here. Now let's take one more example. OK, so we have the system x prime is x squared minus xy, y prime is xy minus 3x plus 2. So step 1, factorize. And we see that for the first equation, we can do it. It will take out the x, and we'll get x minus y. So we have two factors. And the second equation, um, there's um, really no way of factorizing it. So we just have to keep it as one single factor. OK, so we can now write out the conditions. So for the first equation, it will be the first factor 0, or the second factor is 0, which is x equal to y. And uh, the second equation is just 1, that is, this term has to be 0. So two choices from the first one and one choice from the second one. And you make a combination, and you see that we can have two combinations. 
Okay, and let's look at these two combinations. So the first combination would be taking the first one here, x equals 0, and combine it with um, this, uh, what's in the second equation. It's just that. And then we see that if x is 0, then we can plug in x is 0, x is 0, and the second equation gives 2 equals 0, which is not possible. So this combination gives no answer. Now let's look at the second combination. That will be taking this one, x equal y, and combined it with uh, this one, which is here. So let's use x equal y and substitute wherever you have y with x. Then we will have x squared, which we put here, minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So we have this equation. And now this is a um, quadratic um, polynomial. So we see that 2 is 1 times 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So negative 1, negative 2, actually. So we see we can factorize. Is x minus 1 times x minus 2? So this equation here gives us two solutions x is 1 or x is 2. Okay. So now we see that um, both x equals 1 or x equals 2 will make um, this equals 0 when x equal to y. Okay. So we actually will have two critical points, one coming from this one, x is 1, and then y is the same, y is 1 also, or x is 2, and then y is 2. Okay, so let's list out. So now we um, found two critical points using the second combination, that is x, y are both 1, and the second critical point is x, y are both 2. So um, the moral of this example is to show that um, not all combinations will have solution. For example, this combination gives no solution. And the second, for each combination, there could be multiple solutions. For example, here, the second combination gives us two solutions. Okay? So um, that's um, all the examples I will go through to find critical points. Um, in general, if you have complicated right-hand side, as I say, this is not a trivial task, but we will not focus on how to find critical points in the general setting. Now, assuming the critical points are located, and we would like to understand the behavior of the nonlinear system. Okay, so that will be the topic for the next videos. Alright, so that's all for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.